And welcome back to Capitol Tonight. The State Senate Education Committee held its final hearing in Albany today as parents around the state are speaking out about the Common Core. But that is just one of the topics that this committee uh, has been hearing about across the state as it takes testimony. Joining me now to go over the issues, also to explain what the legislature might be able to do about them, is the chair of the Senate Education Committee, Senator John Flanagan. Welcome back to Albany. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you very been much. A while. Um, so <coughs> this is this this is the final in what five? Five. Five hearings around the state. Yep. There was one in New York City, one uh, in Long Island, Long Island, Island Syracuse, yep. Buffalo, New York City. Albany. Okay, and is there an overarching truism that is coming out of this, something that everyone across the state shares? Yeah, um, I, it's some basic things, and I, I say this all the time, but it bears repeating. Parents all want the same thing. I don't care where you live, what your income is, what your background is, they all want a good education for their kids. <clears throat> That's paramount with mm -hmm. everything. Um, there's a lot of frustration out there. It's palpable, it's real, and it's, it's growing. We, we had started doing this in July. We announced that we were going to do the hearings. You might have been the first, right? We were definitely the first. Uh -huh. And we're the only ones that have had formal public hearings. I mean, we're going to have a full public record. We have um, reams of written testimony. We have hundreds of emails from people. So part of that is not only to listen, but to figure out what, if anything, needs to be done. And obviously, we need to work in concert with other people. Right. When you started, though, did you know what you were getting into? Did you know that this whole Common Core curriculum was going to be as big of a problem? You got started before the test scores even came out. We Yes, <clears throat> we did. We had announced the, the schedule. And at a practical level, we weren't going to have hearings in the summer because we figured people aren't going to be engaged. We purposely scheduled them right after school started. Yeah. But we had been talking about this in the latter part of the session. So there was buildup in terms of what we wanted to do. I'm, I'm not surprised by the level of participation, and you have all kinds of mixed comments that come back and forth, but I, I will tell you flat out, I think we have done a very good job of getting a clear cross-section of opinions. Mm -hmm. No shortage of them, no lack of passion attached to them, and we had probably more people anti-Common Core, and particularly as it relates to the implementation, than pro. So. All right, let's stop right there, because this, this is a point that gets convoluted all the time. Common Core, we're hearing from the unions, and we're hearing from even yourself, I think, initially you said the curriculum itself is something that everyone supports, generally speaking. We want to raise standards. We want kids to do better. We want them to be competitive. We want them to do well. But the implementation of those standards is a different thing entirely. That's the point that people, I think, are so upset about. And you said just earlier this week, I think you had one of these public forums that John King, the SED commissioner, attended Correct. in Long Island, right? Yep. And you said you think there has to be changes now. Changes to what? Well, but you, <clears throat> you made a comment that it's really important to make the distinction. Right. Common Core standards are that. It's a set of standard that's been adopted by many states across the country. Common Core curriculum is completely different, related, but completely different. Okay. And people mix them up all the time. The standards are a broad set of parameters with a strong set of goals for academic success, ultimately. Curriculum, the state does not mandate curriculum. We haven't done it in the past. We don't do it now. But there's been a lot of confusion created and a lot of consternation and ridiculous frustration over what has happened. What kind of curriculum is there? When is it coming about? What has come out? Has it been done well? People are talking about things like modules and timing and aligning these tests to the curriculum. So it's a mishmash, but the standards are definitely different than the curriculum. Okay, so when we say there needs to be changes, <coughs> what are we talking about? Because there are some states, common core standards are tied to federal race to the top money. I mean, this is all a trickle down effort by the Obama administration to get education reform into play, right? I mean, that's what this is about. So they say, we'll incentivize you if you adopt Common Core and a whole host of other things, being friendlier to charter schools, et cetera. There are some states that say, you know what, this Common Core thing, forget it. We don't want your money. We don't want to do this. Do you see New York going down that path? Uh, I don't see that happening right now, but I want to make a distinction. Of the 45 states that have adopted Common Core, only 11 are involved in Race to the Top. Mm. So there's a small nexus, but the Common Core standards, there's there are many states that have not adopted it with race to the top funding no, or we did. ties. We did, but that, that was adopted in 2010. Do I see that changing right now? No. One of the people, one of the groups that testified today, the Educational Conference Board, mm -hmm. that's comprised of several major groups in the state of New York. NYSET, school administrators, superintendents, school board members, um, PTAs. So it's seven major groups. They came out reiterating their support for Common Core standards. 
they're not happy with the implementation because it's been messy, it's been an artful, and you can't, at some point you can't make excuses for it. Okay, so, you're, so, so we're not <coughs> making excuses. The question is, what can be done about it? Because there's a certain degree of autonomy in the state education department, right? The Board of Regents runs the education department. Right. The commissioner answers to the Board of Regents. The Board of Regents, let's be clear, is appointed ostensibly by the assembly because they have more members than the Senate does. I mean, that's no just question. how it works. Okay, so there are people, some of your colleagues, some not your colleagues, calling for the head of the commissioner, John King. Do you believe he needs to resign? I think that, that this misplaces the focus. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> we can talk about the regents, we can talk about the commissioner. This is about educating kids and that's, I think those are side issues that you know fill the air so to speak but that's not what the focus should be. I'm, I want to know what are we doing to make better teachers in the classroom? How are we looking to improve student outcomes? And the commissioner has been all over the place. I don't agree with him on everything and I wouldn't expect that I would. I don't agree with everything that the Regents does, but there is a clear distinction. They set the educational policy in the state. Overwhelmingly, we provide the funding and to some degree oversight. So we, we have a role to play, but I, I also think there's an element where the legislature should not really be setting the educational policy. Leave it to the people who are experts, who are out in the field, and who are educators by background. So do you imagine that you you will try to do something, the Senate will try to do something of some nature to get involved here, other than the hearings, which of course obviously you've been having, but what comes out of those? Will legi legislation come out of those? I, I would say several different things. We just finished them today. Right. We're gonna take written comments for two more days, put together the whole record, which is essentially online already, send it along to SED, to the regents, to the governor, to our federal representatives, which I w do wanna talk about, and I think there are three basic components. Number one, action items that can be done by SED now, within their purview that they can just turn around and change things right away. Second is, in terms of funding, a lot of push for money for professional development. Mm -hmm. There's some out there, but how do you do that equally across the state? And then third, some potential legislative action. But the reason we had the hearings was to get the legitimate input and now I think we'll come up with a series of recommendations. For me to have said that in the middle of these hearings would have been foolish because it would have showed that we were not going to listen. What about the governor? I mean, the governor <coughs> has really stayed out of this whole battle. Should he be more active? And if so, what should he be doing? There's no question that the governor should be more active. He's the chief executive of the ah, Empire but State. but he didn't choose John King. I didn't choose John King either. No, I know. <coughs> I'm just saying what what you he, you he say the legislature has an oversight responsibility. Yes. We have a funding responsibility. Okay, so I understand where you possibly could go with that. What should he do? He bears responsibility to what exactly? Well, he certainly bears responsibility in terms of the budget, and there's a lot of things that he can do as the chief executive that affect many other agencies. SED is different because of the regents. I grant you that, but he is the chief executive of the state. He bears an equal, if not a higher, responsibility than all of us as legislators because the governor has talked about education. He referred to himself as the student's lobbyist. He did, so yeah, he did. You, I think there's a compelling um, argument that you should be weighing in. His opinion matters. What he says clearly will have an effect. It may push it one way or may push it another. But I think to some extent, primarily because I chair the committee, that when I say certain things, people will pay attention. What about the <coughs> moratorium on using the results of testing for teacher evaluations, which is what the union is seeking? The union is seeking a number of different things, and here's a perfect example. The PTA comes out this week, they want a one-year moratorium. Right. NYSA comes out, they want a three-year moratorium. Right. The school superintendent superintendents came out today, they want a two-year moratorium on any new initiatives. Just heard that today. So I think there'll be a lot more debate. I do believe that there's going to be a strong push to put the brakes on. Um, and it's, you know, SED is out there, but I'm not sure. People don't feel like right now that they are being listened to with follow-up action. Okay. Uh, and we're going to have to leave it here, unfortunately, but, but, but let's put this sort of overarching thing on the table. While the grown-ups are all having this debate, the people ostensibly who we started this whole conversation about, and you said everybody in the state wants one thing. They want what's best for the children. While you guys are all having this fight, the kids aren't going to be able to make up third grade or fifth grade or eighth grade or whatever it is that they, right? So if you put the moratorium on, then where are they? I, w I would say a couple of things. I think if you look at things that are out there, these things called modules, and you look at the timing of what's come out, it's problematic. 
I don't care how good a teacher is, if they don't know what the rules are or what the curriculum is, how are they supposed to properly prepare kids for, number one, a well-rounded education, and two, for assessments that may be coming. So in my opinion, looking at what has been done, the timing of it and the lack of efficiency of it, those are compelling reasons to say, if we're going to move ahead, let's align the curriculum first. Let's get it out and get it done right. For example, there's in one area there's supposed to be seven modules. There's only one out. Mm, right. The other six aren't here. So how can we hold teachers accountable and parents by extension because parents, this is new to them as well. It's, <clears throat> it's frustrating, but in my opinion, there are actions that SED can take involving testing, pre and post testing. They can be much clearer to the people in the field and I think provide more guidance than is coming now. All right, so obviously we're going to talk about this more as the session gets underway. That happens in January. Until then, I thank you very much, Senator, for coming in. That's okay, we will, we will definitely comment sooner than that. Sooner than that, okay. Definitely sooner than that. Well, then we'll later. have you back, hopefully. You'll be back. I will be happy. Okay, to very good. Back. We have to take a quick break, but coming up next, we'll look at the effort to sue the state over the long-delayed decision on hydrofracking. The joint